Yeah, yeah. Modern cars are much safer. I had J- I, I had an argument with Jeremy for 15 minutes one time because he says that, and it may be the problem with telling him. I don't know why the fire department told him this, but when he was in his crash and rolled, they told him that if he had had on his safety belt, he'd have died. So now he thinks that that he should never wear one mm-hmm. in case he's in an identically ridiculous <laughs> accident. And are they even he, right? That, co- that fireman is not an expert in automobile analysis. Well, I think the situation was that the roof collapsed down and Mine the seatbelt would have held him up. And, but, but because it wasn't, he, he was able to go down into the floorboard and like thrown into the floorboard and that saved him. Whereas if he'd been in the seat, he'd have died because his, his truck got crumpled. Mine did. Uh, I've been well, in that I, accident with a seatbelt. I, I, I don't know. I know. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. He, he was a Ford Ranger. I, I don't know what you were in. You know? and, and again, and again yeah. I'm not saying that the fireman was accurate in his, in, in his statement after he cut Jeremy out of his Ranger. He was texting and driving with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're culpable. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, to him maybe. I, I, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I gave him a car to drive, you know. Afterwards, it, you know, because he, I felt a little culpable. Yeah, a guilt. Car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I gave him a anyway, but but so he won't wear a seatbelt now because of that, ever. Man, that is that is dumb. Would he be interesting on the show? No. No. But his legend brings a certain appeal to it, right? What if we had him on for forty-five minutes just to I, meet I, Jeremy? I think it's probably Kyle's translation of Jeremy. I'm kind of curious why why so out because of the Kyle's entertaining. Be- because he's like, he- he's he's difficult to understand. I met him several well, times. He- he's he- he's very difficult to understand. He's he- he's got an IQ of about eighty five. Um, he <laughs> would have he- gone he's... lower. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, your boy is slow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, boy is slow. Um, yeah. He's. You know, he's got no interesting stories. He doesn't understand things. Um, How is this not funny? (laughs) I mean, we had wings on for years. (laughs) What what kind of things could we ask? And I'm like four for four on on wings. Yeah, you've got two more rounds in the cylinder. (laughs) Yeah. What would you ask Jeremy about to try and elicit a funny response? Maybe is the best question. Girls. Uh, I'd ask him about chicken the porta potty. See, that's yeah. that is so much worse than a van. I'd ask him about the time. <laughs> I'd, I'd ask him to tell a story about chicken the porta potty, and he'd get all red faced because I'm not supposed to know about it. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to know how he gets laid at all. Did he get his teeth fixed? He's married. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's married. He has two children, and uh, she already had one. Um, his teeth are still a wreck. Okay. They uh, they look like he looks like a like a viking from from a movie or something they're all black and brown like they're like baked beans <laughs> they're all jagged on the edges and stuff like oh uh, so they're not even like just missing like he couldn't say like no oh, i used to play for the thrashers you know, you know in total this this is gonna is be lost on location? some people leave a comment on whether you'd like to see jeremy on the show his teeth look like car keys i was gonna yeah. say to taylor because taylor oh. will get this reference it in total war warhammer the uh the uh, the lizard men swords that the source warriors have that are it looks like a paddle but with like teeth oh, attached yeah. to the edge all the way around. That's what his teeth look like. I'd rather be bit. I've said this before, but I'd rather be bitten by a rabid dog <laughs> than, than, than Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. I, I oh, this my, makes my me cousin, sad for Jeremy. Well, I'm gonna keep going. My cousin told me a story <laughs> once about like. Uh, he, he and Jeremy were together, and uh, they met some chicks at like a, a parking lot somewhere, the outside of a bar or something, and they're all kind of a little drunk and flirting and stuff. And Jeremy pairs off with this girl because it's, you know, it's a dimly lit parking lot, and they're over there making out and really going to town kissing. And Scott's just like, oh, oh like gagging, like thinking about this. And like Jeremy goes inside to piss, and he kind of gets the girl aside. And he's like, how can you do that? She's like, what? <laughs> How can you, how can you make out with him when his teeth are like that? And he's just now coming back out of the bar, door <laughs> open, swing. She's walk, he's walking over. She goes, like what? He's like, look. He said he he watched her face when they come back out, and like the parking light light caught him just right. He said she went pale, <laughs> just just all the color left her face, all the blood. 
just left her he face. He tricked her with just... smart mouth. She had no oh, idea. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy would Is gingivitis do this contagious? <laughs> we'd go, My we'd gun's go on. <laughs> I'd take Jeremy on road trips. He'd never bring money, ever. Like, like we'd, be, we'd go on like a four-day road trip to like Arizona, five-day road trip to Arizona, and he'd have $25, right? <laughs> like, tw- oh, that's pretty douchey. He'd have $25, and this is a guy who smokes a pack a day and needs at least two Red Bulls in the morning to get going. And is going to need two or three meals a day, right? Guess who's paying for all that? So I, I'm driving the truck. Scott's in the passenger seat. Jeremy's in the back. But he won't sit in the back like a normal adult. He wants to, like, lean forward like a parrot or like a dog and be on our shoulder. Like, be right between us. And <sighs> breathe on you. And, and it would just be stinking up the front of the truck so bad, you'd have to roll the windows down. And we'd all start smoking cigarettes to try to, like, smoke him out so he'd get back away <laughs> from just, it. Just <laughs> trying to smoke him out? Like, like puffing on cigarettes to try to, like, smoke him I wonder what his back side away. of this would be. He I think he would out. just go into his shell and be feelings hurt. Yeah, of course he would. He's just, a, but but he's a madman. Dude, like, like, I remember Jeremy, we were at one of the paintball trips, and Jeremy was oh, driving yeah. the truck. And Jeremy was driving the truck. By the way, Jeremy is a very bad driver. And one issue with him is when he misses turns, in spite of the fact that the phone's telling you which way to go, he doesn't fix it normally. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I missed my lift. All right, don't worry, I'll make a U-turn up here a block away. No, he'll go for like seven miles, just like waiting for the perfect opportunity to turn around or maybe just the road to come to a natural like bell end. He'd never done any big city driving. And there we were in Chicago. And it wasn't like, Chicago, though. It was like Julian. South Ju- of Chicago. Yeah. South side of Chicago. And, and, and he was a terrible driver. So I'm like busting his balls bad, right? And he's getting legit mad at me. Now, I so believe Jer- Jeremy could kick my ass. But Joe Lozon's also busting his balls. And I'm under the cover. I feel like I've got a protective umbrella. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you've got his... a UFC fighter. <laughs> that he's got a it was they great. Were... They were picking on him pretty bad. Just and, about and, driving. It wasn't like we were getting personal with it or anything. No, but but it was like it it was it was hurting his feelings and he was getting pouty. His feelings and, were easily hurt. Yeah, his feelings are easily hurt. Um but but you know, that's that's how shit goes, you know. He's he, he's getting pouty. And, and and he is the type of guy to to like want to fight too. Like like Oh, like I'm fine with that. Just not with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, 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 I, I wouldn't want to tussle with Jeremy either. Jeremy's a strong dude. Oh, no. Um, but even yeah. less so Joe Lozon. When you visit smartmouth.com for free shipping today. I went to the dentist yes. the other day, and I made sure to uh, use my smart mouth before I went in there. I didn't want to offend anyone. An act of kindness. Yes, yes. That's the most mm-hmm. important. That I think that your breath smelling nice when you go to the dentist might even be more important than when you're going on a date. Because, like, your date... It's probably going to smell your breath, but your dentist is 100% going oh, to smell yeah. your breath. Yeah, He's but in there. i got to say payoff-wise, if my dentist smells my breath, then it's bad. All right. You, you haven't seen date... my dental assistant. <laughs> so you're <laughs> but, looking but... to combine the two then, the dental experience with the date. Oh, God, that would have been the best. Like, she gets me stuff on laughing gas. I'd have paid $1,000 for that. It was 300 to get the tooth pulled. But I, and you'd, I'd have, have... You'd, have, you'd have great breath the whole time ah! you know, as you were getting jerked off. Like pull mm, a Louis C.K. in the dentist's office. Like that chair's <laughs> all relaxing. There's a TV up there. Like maybe a slipper a hundred. She puts porn on for you. That chick's ass was so big. It, uh, I got. I want to go back and get more. I don't. My teeth. Are, the rest of my teeth are fine. I'd go back and get a good tooth pulled just to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Kyle's team with the dentist versus date thing because oh with a dentist, you know they're judging your oral health and your breath hardcore the whole time. And you know that they've had so people what? in that chair throughout the day that had worse breath. And so use a little smart mouth beforehand before your dentist, and you can really fool them into thinking that you've been taking much better care of your teeth than you are. <laughs> All right, I don't want to mess up your ad roll for this, but <laughs> that logic is just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, oh, of course it is. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's <laughs> being silly. That's of course. Oh, no, no, I don't want to impress my dentist. I really prefer to impress the girl that I'm trying to sleep with. You know? <laughs> And really trying to sleep like with your dentist. Fooling the dentist about your hygiene. Like, that's like, like the goal is just a checkup that you got to pass, not like you're actually there for like health. Yeah, like you're at the anything. doctor and they're like asking you to breathe. Like, is this easy? It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. yeah it's, it's, <laughs> I always make this sound. That's, that's how it is at the dentist, though, because you know before you go to the dentist, you floss better than you normally floss. You brush a little longer. Never you want to put on a good show for them because I don't know if you've ever had the that nitpicky dentist who's like, See, you haven't been flossing. Your gums wouldn't be bleeding if you had been. 
And I'm just thinking, like, my guns wouldn't be bleeding if you were a little more careful, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I right, always tell everyone, Okay. Let me tell everyone a little bit about War Dragons. Support for today's show also comes from War Dragons, a mobile real... Joe's going to crush I'm looking you. forward to seeing I, I was trying to think if I had any more um, Jeremy uh, little excerpts. Of course, like I said, he'd, he'd go on those goddamn five-day road trips with $25 in his pocket. <laughs> oh, Scott and I had, you know, concealed carry permits, so we'd often, like, especially on those trips when there's lots of expensive shit in the truck, we'd be packing heat, concealed carry. And he wanted to do it too, but he didn't have a license. And you'd have to continually be like, no, 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 leave the gun in the car. You can't go into a fucking gas station strapped, you moron. Like, like you always have to be disarming this guy. Like, like he uh, sounds he'd, like uh, dealing with a dangerous child. A Georgia a concealed, by the way. Child. I'm pretty sure you just mail in for that shit. Like, it, hey, you have fifty dollars. What are you talking about? At, at the time, he made at the, like I don't know Jeremy's exact age. You know, he he's one of those like you look I don't at know him. His exact age. <laughs> No, does no he? one does. That's unbelievable. <laughs> um, if I had to guess, I would say at this point, you know, because I'm 31, I, I would say he's somewhere between uh, 23 and 26. 20, maybe oh, 20. Really? I, I don't know. So you think I don't he's five years know. younger than you? I don't fucking know. I always thought I it was about your age. He's like my age. Yeah, he I always looks, pictured him as older. I pictured well, him as Kyle's he, age. Yeah. He doesn't fucking moisturize, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a bottle of Jack Black in there that I'm squeezing on twice a day. You gotta be looking good. The, the time he's that not, he saves not, not moisturizing and not brushing his teeth. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's so why he's time. so industrious. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's that why he gets aggregate. so much done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he, he's just like, he's made all kinds of like, he's married to the, I'm not going to like tear down his, his entire life here. You know, we, we've been pretty hard on him. I don't think he listens, but he might, you know, but, but he's a real fuck up. Um, it's just, just a real, it, it, I, I, I've told the story before, but quickly, you know, we're, we're in a five star hotel in Houston, Texas, like right next to Fleming's. Like, I don't remember what the name of the hotel was, but. This motherfucker gets locked out of his hotel room. They, they, he, he and my cousin come to my room because I've got a balcony to smoke cigarettes. You know, they want to smoke off the balcony. So we all smoke a cigarette, and it's like, all right, good night. They go back to their room. They get locked out of their room. Scott is wearing a T-shirt and, like, pajama pants. Jeremy is in pink boxers with hearts on them and nothing else. And they play paper, rock, scissors to decide who has to go downstairs to ask for a key. Jeremy loses. So I get a phone call in my hotel room. Uh, Mr. Myers, um, there's a gentleman down here who says he's in one of your rooms, a Mr. Fulbright. And I'm just like, yeah, he is. Uh, give him a key. Well, we're going to need you to come down and verify that you are <laughs> who you are. And I'm just like, well, who else would I be? I'm in my room. And they're like, we need you to come down. And I come down, and there he is. There's a, there's a man playing a piano in the corner, okay? There's, <laughs> there's a restaurant attached where people are wearing, like, um, jackets and ties. There's piano music playing. There's a concierge wearing a goddamn bow tie 30 feet away. And there's Jeremy at this $10,000 $10, marble counter wearing nothing but pink boxers with his nipples pierced and his rebel flag tattoos all <laughs> over his goddamn body. And, and his hair's a mess because he's, he, he's one of those rednecks that always, always, always wears a hat, but not right now. So it's just <laughs> mangled up and crazy. And he's like playing with his nipple piercing. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to approach and be like, He's with me. <laughs> You're right. I've never seen this man before. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you for calling me. <laughs> yep, that uh, he's with me, and she yeah. gives me a key, and I give it to him, and that was just a just a real embarrassment. Um, everywhere we took him, just a, just a real uh. You know the the thing that I don't like. What I would ask him about is stealing your guns, right? Kyle would like lend him a 1911 or something. People don't know. We'll call this a 750 dollars gun, and then he would just keep it. Like, maybe forever. Just with no intention of ever returning it. Like, you want this oh. back? You got to catch me. To it, so he would borrow guns, and uh, I would lose track of how many he'd borrowed. And, and it'd get to a point where, like, I was consolidating my guns, or I was, like, organizing my guns, and I'd be like, what the fuck are all my guns? God damn. And so I was, like, you know, calling up, like, hey, Jeremy, do you have some of my guns? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jeremy, I need you to bring 
all of my guns that you have over here because I'm like consolidating, I'm cleaning, I'm Only if some you off. can name the ones I have. <laughs> I remember he brought them back <laughs> Which and he ones literally are you <laughs> he brought them back and he literally had twenty two thousand dollars worth of guns. He literally had twenty two thousand dollars worth of guns borrowed, and wow. I was just like, "We're gonna be on a one at a time basis from now on, Jerome. Just you check one out, you got to bring it back to get another. This is just way too much. You had an arsenal as, as with a non gun owner. What what do you borrow guns for? What do you like? What stuff. is the problem you have that you need that you need to borrow a gun? Uh, you know, you want to his no thing. Shame. He liked to show them off to people. Um, he liked to go to Walmart and be like, yeah, look what I got. I got a fucking crazy thing here. And he would also go uh, deer hunting with guns sometimes. He like, um, he'd go shooting. You know, it'd be a thing where like him and his buddies are going somewhere to shoot. You know, they're going to go down by yeah. this, to the river or somebody's house and everybody lays out eight rifles and then they, they borrow each other's guns and they shoot a bunch of targets. And so he'd okay. want to borrow multiple guns. But mostly... To like show them off and brag that he knew me or pretend they were his potentially. I don't know, something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. like if I lived close to Kyle and I wanted to go shooting, like I wouldn't want to go rent the same guns that Kyle has from a range and they probably wouldn't have nearly the selection Kyle does of stuff to <laughs> rent. And so, of course, I'd go to Kyle and borrow it and go shoot that. Cause so you're, bre you're breaking up, Taylor. <laughs> but. Taylor, Taylor, you're oh, breaking right, up. I'll get up for a yeah, I'm sure you'll be back in a second. But uh, anyway, I think he'd be interesting. Not for four hours, but for, you know, half an hour, one hour. I haven't talked to him in a while. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, maybe next time I do see him, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it to him and, I, and I'll see about it. Um, I, I just don't know what we talk about, you know? Like, like, like I, I'll ask him. He'd want his wife is like, uh, like keeps him on a real short leash. Um, so he's like not allowed to go out and do stuff. Is she regular intelligence? I, I, like, I feel like this is a Forrest Gump situation almost. Where, yeah. Like, if she's is it Jenny, Jen A. The Jen A is fully aware of what Forrest Gump has got going on, right? She's smart. Yeah. Jeremy's wife. Where are we on this? Um, she's she's fully there. You know, she's real good at at uh, getting all those government checks for each and every child. And uh, making sure she files all the correct paperwork uh, to get all her government money. Um, mm. So she she's all there. Uh, she really keeps him on a short leash. Um, he just just uh, and and her mother, you know, they're both on him like uh, like, like just stink on shit. Just making sure that he does what he's supposed to do when he's supposed to do it. He better be where he's supposed to be all the time, always checking up on him. Um, you know, that, that was as of about a year ago. Like, I can just remember be, me, Scott and I would be hanging out, and Jeremy comes around, he's like, oh, 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 oh. which translated means I don't have much time, gentlemen. I, I have to be back home forthwith. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're doing, uh, you know, uh, Kyle uh, guest stars, what's Scott up to? Is he welding again? I think he's welding again. Uh -huh. He's gained a significant amount of weight. Mm. Uh, he's I, at that age. Told. People do sometimes. I guess so. He's about a year younger than myself. Uh -huh. uh, he's also, I think he might be married. I know he's got a couple kids now. Okay. Uh, he's got two kids that I know of. I... There could two be kids. more scattered about. <laughs> oh, he's got two kids. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, I don't know. I don't think he's married to her. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly what that situation's like, but I think he's, but he has a serious again. girlfriend. I don't, I, Oh, I don't know. Then he has a co-parenting deal. Fuck. I don't know. Okay. I, don't know. <laughs> I was really trying to help here. Make, make you <laughs> seem like a responsible guy. <laughs> I'm sure he takes care of shit. You know, he's not a deadbeat dad or anything. I'm sure he's, he's looking out for, uh, everybody, but, um, depending on the know. kids. <laughs> Well, those, they're in another state. That's don't count. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids in Georgia. Um, but yeah, yeah. He, um, he, I think he's back welding again. Mm -hmm. uh, doing, doing pretty well at that. He, uh, they bought a fucking farm uh, right. foolishly. And, and uh, like they, they just, just, he immediately was like, ah, this isn't, this isn't going to work. I don't want to do this. This was an error. And uh, so they backed out of that whole thing, and uh, that's gone back to the person they purchased it from. And I, I don't know what the financial ramifications of that are. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know that really worked that way properly. I didn't know you could buy and return. Uh, you know, you made a deal with a person, and just they're just going back on the deal, you know, that sort of thing. Are generally those things with paperwork and money exchanged? 
Yeah, um, there's signed contracts in real estate. Maybe he made an unofficial deal. I think it was sort of a handshake kind of deal. Like, uh -huh. like I, I, I think it was something like that. I don't know this, the, the, the extreme specifics. I know there was a significant down payment to sort of, you know, uh, make sure that things were firm, you know, maybe fifteen or $25,000 or something. So that may be a loss on, on his part. But, like, um, he, he makes very good money with the welding thing. But it's, it's one of those feast and famine things. He's, he's really good at earning money, but he's so much better at spending it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like like we talked about that truck last uh, two or three weeks ago with uh, uh -huh. Richard Ryan, and how like I just don't see the two fifty or three fifty trucks being worth it unless you own a goddamn horse horse farm or something. Yeah, that's a good time. I've been um, this is a bit of a uh, topic change, but it's still around the the sexual realm. I I was listening to Rogan and they were talking about uh, dick pill dick pills, um, like gas station dick pills, okay. and they were this thing called Rhino Seven, this pill called Rhino Seven. And uh, they were saying that there are traces of like t um, testosterone in it, and like if you take this pill, you can you'll test positive for who knows what because it's made in China, and they don't clean the vats well. So like they'll do like a mix of fucking steroids, and then they'll do a mix of like Rhino Seven dick pills or whatever. Very skeptical. They're, they're Carry on. Yeah. Well, well, they went on and on about it because they, and they said that. Um, uh, I can't John remember Jones. which one of their one of their well John Jones is one of the ones who who was on these and tested positive but they were also talking about one of their friends was saying that it's much better than Cialis and I was at the fucking gas station a minute ago and they have Rhino 7s I'm a little embarrassed to buy a Rhino 7 but I'm very curious no. it's an enormous pill it's where, like a horse dude, get one and where are they for back. sale I'm interested. like are, on, I just linked station. it on Amazon so I, I, I pictured it being in a vending machine in the bathroom that that's not how it's for sale oh. No, no, right by the counter, right by the counter. Like, like you've never noticed. Um, mm -mm. If you go to the gas station, especially no, go not in, like really. a. But go on. Oh well, shit. Go in the gas station sometime. Like right on the counter, they have a whole rack of like sexual aids. They have uh, energy pills and and like sex boosters. And uh, they, it, I saw it. It was like Rhino Seven, and there's a picture of a rhino, of course, with the big horn, right? <laughs> you know, that, like, I didn't enormous. get that until just now. The whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I did either, if I'm being honest. And and the pill is four times as big as like a, a, an aspirin tablet or something. It's huge. I feel like I'd have a hard time getting it down, but they said it was just bonkers, like, like effective. I, 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 I want I one now. They, they, the gas station too. by my house, not the classiest joint. I feel like they yeah, would sell these. Find them. They've got all kinds of seedy shit at my gas station. They have porn. They have just porn DVDs in there, like like no cover on them. It just says, they, 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 they literally have like a white, cover like paper and they wrote in black magic marker what the theme is it's like black xxx which i guess means black girls and it's like butts xxx and i was like holy shit this is just as bad as like a, a dirty cover and they've got all kind of switchblade knives and big bongs and hookahs and shit yours and might just, be just, shadier than mine they, i i was at a <laughs> gas station once Pete. i saw any a gas station that pipe. sells hookahs <clears throat> i saw a fucking or sketchy as fuck pipe at a at a gas station a one time. A black pipe? A crack. Mm. Oh, a pipe. crack. Pipe. Oh yeah. I've Smoking seen those. Crack cocaine. You know, it's got the or meth. It's got that ball on the end. It's completely different than like a, a bowl. It's I could not believe that they sold that there. I had never seen one in I would real have life. totally thought that was a mini bowl. <laughs> like it, it, the, oh I oh, see, yeah. yeah, the ball on the end. That's where the pot goes. No, nope, because it's all glass and that's that is where the crack goes. That's where yeah. you put the crack rocks. And uh, I, there's a gas station in the city here that, like, I've gone to before on the way to, like, someone's place. It's like, hey, pick up beer. And I'll go, I went in, and it's run owned by these Indian or Pakistani people. It's like, hey, do you, do you guys have beer at this fucking gas station where every every gas station has beer? Yeah. yeah and they're, yeah. Li they're like, uh, no, it is against our religion. We do not keep a beer here. No alcohol sales here. And I'm like, it's, and I look down, and there's an entire glass case full of hookahs and pieces for weed and crack pipes of different <laughs> sizes, you know, for the festive crackhead. Hey, I decided, you know, we were going to really go hard tonight. You know, like, <laughs> I got a really big, you know, fucking mobile on the run pipe. And it was just an interesting thing of, wow, okay, so you, you can't sell me Bud Light at this fucking gas station, but you'll sell that vagabond a glass pipe to ruin his life with. So... I don't know, you know, religion, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, my gas station is Muslims, but they apparently have no restrictions because they got alcohol, pornography. If you sneak in the back, you can gamble. 
Um, they've got like video poker machines that take cash, which I know are illegal. You know, they got everything. They, 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 no holds barred up there. I pretty and it stinks in there. Like it, look, it, it's it was Indian people for a long time, and I really liked the Indian people. I, I'm pretty sure the owner's wife was really into me. She'd always give me a look. And uh, <laughs> but now it's Muslim people. I know mm -hmm. because their name. They applied for like a liquor license. Uh, to get liquor instead of beer, and uh, their their license is on the you know the the thing, or their their name is. It smells so bad in there now that I may have to change gas stations. You walk in and it hits you in the face. It's like I don't know what it is. Are we talking about got, the convenience store food? area yeah. or the bathroom? No. In the convenience store. No, I think oh, they. Yeah. It smells like they're they've got slave girls downstairs without plumbing or something. It, it's awful in there. It smells like curry shit. Hmm. Oh man. Well, have you ever have you ever gone to the bathroom there? Oh God, no! Hmm. I've that's never had this shit so bad that no, no. I, I'd rather go go outside and shit on the wall. You can trace or it down to the source and see what's up. <laughs> oh, it smells like there's a dead possum behind the wall that's been eating curry for a year. It's just a terrible stink. Do we need a new but topic? Yeah, Is there a pause there? Well, I want some of those gas station dick pills, but I'm too embarrassed to buy them. They're I do Amazon. too. Maybe I'll report back and let you they're guys know Amazon, what's They're on Amazon, but they're very expensive. You have to mm. buy like a five-pack or a ten-pack, and it's like $40 or something. Yeah, and I just ordered what some. What do you expect? They're on the way. What is, what did is you really? I like can't tell. Yeah. Something? You did? Yeah. yeah, because it's a funny bit. Like Now you got to get some too, and we'll try them out. All right. I'm oh, yeah, I'll just put it on the Amazon that the whole family uses. And yeah. wow. <laughs> Hope is going to be like, Dad, are you okay? Oh. And you know the <laughs> testosterone pills like, that we've been <laughs> supposed to be taking? What does it yeah. pair with when I, you I look them up on uh, Amazon, three Kyle? Days and I forgot entirely. And so I haven't taken those in a long time. I, I haven't been taking mine either. What did you say, Filthy? I just wanted to know when you're looking at these, what are the yeah. suggested pairings? With Customers the, the often rhino, bought the these rhino. together. Oh, I remember uh, what it was. It's funny you mentioned that. It was lubricant. And some very provocative men's underwear, mm. like like it was like a um, a jock strap that had like a, a pouch for your junk, but it wasn't like a sports jock strap. It was like a sex jock strap. Like it was a like, little elephant face with the trunk. No, I have that. I have that. <laughs> <laughs> Please be right by the desk. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that. Funny you mentioned I, it. I fucking hope he has this. I do. I, I'm, I'm digging. <laughs> How many other? What, is he I have a feeling animals? that if this, yeah, exactly, if we could get this, one, you know, <laughs> if we could get this camera to pan right and left, I suspect that's not a clean room. This is, no, <laughs> my, my underwear drawer is like right here in a cabinet. Like these are all my my my, undie, my meat undies. I have like mm -hmm. a whole fucking collection of these. But I, I have the one elephant trunk. I can't find it. I'm sorry. It must maybe, here's some laundry. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you wear it recently? A little no. insight into Kyle's life. Yeah, check the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and they shrink and the trunk gets all shitty. That's probably funny. I, I'm sorry, I'm not coming up with them. But, but they're yellow and they have like a, you know, looks a thing of your cock to go in. And they're really funny. I, I, I think they're hilarious. I mean, maybe we should all order some of those too. Well, I'm not showing those off. See if we can rip through them with our Rhino 7. <laughs> <laughs> that but, combined with bone broth is going to be devastating to whatever poor girl uh, it comes up next in this roulette of mine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run to the bathroom, but, I, but I'll show you. Again, I showed them on PKN. I got my pajama jeans. Like, this isn't a sponsor or any bullshit or anything. Go on Amazon get yourself some fucking pajama jeans. Chiz and I have them now. They're 40 bucks a pair. They are pajama pants. <laughs> No. I found my fucking one watt laser. I've been having so much fun with this. This is. I was wondering what was making it green it's, behind it's you. It's a thousand dollar laser that, that <laughs> got sent to me forever ago. So, the little laser pointer that you might have on a keychain is like twenty milliwatts or something. This is five hundred times more powerful. It uh, you know, it burns things. It'll burn through. Like you can shine it on somebody's ass across the room and burn through their pants. You can see it's like illuminating the whole fucking room. It it. It'll burn through your cornea in like a, a split second. You're supposed to wear protective glasses with it. Wait, it's, is that the one we were playing with in Joliet? And we yes. uh, we burned through the styrofoam of that chicken tenders yes. like take home box, and like we could smell the chicken heating up. Yeah, like I'm shining <laughs> yeah, that was the wall pretty cool. right now. It's outrageous. And then we burned plants. Yeah, it's right out. Yeah. You can see the beam <laughs> in we the air. Like, nearby. <laughs> 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 like, like it takes that long to get hot on my hand. Like it's hot. It it, it just immediately starts burning. My hand. Wait, I believe you. You don't. You don't, you don't, you don't keep doing 
Here, uh, yeah. burn something close to you and let us see. I, it won't burn well because I don't have the lens. So, like, it's got a lot of lenses that you attach to the tip to focus it in. And I, I can't find my lenses. And the lens kit is like $80. And I, I really don't feel like spending $80 on it. But I, I guess I will. But I don't think it'll I don't have anything handy. Those to. prostitutes are going to get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to burn. Like, like, like we're going to play a game with this. I'll see if it'll burn my hat here after a while. Oh, yeah, look, look, look at the smoke. See the smoke? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can see the smoke in the air. Look at that. Yeah, immediately, like, burning through my fucking hat. It's, it's pretty outrageous. And that's without the lens. Like, with the lens, uh, it, it's three or four times more concentrated and hotter and, and like, does its job better. It's, it uh, burned right through it? straw. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it burned a hole through it, yeah. It's 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 like a, a adult super toy. They're, they're so much fun. At nighttime, you see the beam go into fucking ah, stinks in here now. Go into fucking. <laughs> space. You're burning your ceiling. That's why. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna look up after this and realize. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> House is on fire. I hope the smoke. I, I'm installing new Treats smoke alarms. Treats it like a gun. As really long as it's stuff. pointed up, it's safe. <laughs> yeah, it's just so much fun. They're from WickedLasers.com. Again, not a sponsor or anything, but they're just fucking cool. I think they're five hundred dollars. Advanced now. since then, like that's a they watt have watt or something, right? Now they're five times five. that a hundred watt. Yeah, I, maybe, maybe like I, I think they got a three watt. I, I haven't been on the website in a while, but they're two or three times more powerful. I think that you can get them now, which is how, just how big of a le legal laser can you have? I used to think it was one watt, but maybe there's, I don't know what restrictions are. Like, people shine them at aircraft sometimes, like dummies, and, and, and get in a lot of trouble. It's, it's, very, it's, a, it's a serious offense to shine it at an aircraft. There's a guy on YouTube um, who makes outrageous ones. It's like a shotgun, and it has, like, yeah. it, it, it's like, I, I don't exaggerate, you know, a hundred of what Kyle has, and it doesn't last long. It gets hot. Yeah, there's, they, so, so they sell one now that's three and a half times more powerful than what I have here. Um, probably a grant. It sucks when your awesome toys get less awesome just because something else exists. Oh, and it... Wait. The three and a half watt one is $300, too. Oh, nice. I didn't pay shit. Yeah, you got that going for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but 80 I can't bucks see, and you could have one almost as good as that. I can't see anything right now. <laughs> I, Did, I mean, you were just playing with what you called one of the most powerful lasers you can buy. Yeah, it's. I, I really should get those glasses at least. I, I really. I feel like I've been staring at the sun. Oh. How's your hand feel? I. It's fine. It, it, it's got real hot. I'm still interested in those whores. I mean, let's set a Patreon level. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything oh, like yeah. a TPS report at work? Like something that you just hate doing? Well, or like you? Do you like? I don't know, account for all your time that week or like something that, that seems like pointless record keeping. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, I think there's stuff like that in every job where mm -hmm. you're just like, Ugh, why could I possibly need this information kept in, you know, kept for, for further use. We're never going to touch this again, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I bet it's a lot worse in like giant companies. Like, especially it's, I, I, I don't know how to account accounting i don't know but i imagine there's a ton of that in accounting where it's just all day dealing with shit that you don't feel like is super significant but you just have to log everything yeah but that's like the, the outside you know looking in at, I have no at accounting there was and at cisco when i coded uh we would often have to like oh you know whatever like it didn't even matter how many hours you worked pretend it was 40 and then divide it appropriately right so if you did 80 hours that week then you just everything would be a half hour and uh they just want to know where to like assign your expense to on all the projects and i always did a really good job at it i filled them out perfectly and no one else did so it would always fail after like six months they'd be like you know what fuck it just stop tracking your time and i'm like wait a minute like all you people aren't doing this how do you just not do your job like it I, they, they staged a mutiny and and i'm yeah. like the only asshole tracking all his metrics i uh it, yeah. it happened several times and every time i was flabbergasted by it that, that is always surprising at a job when you'll talk to someone who's just like, oh, yeah, I don't do that. And it's like, what? But that's like, the, that's what they're paying us to do. Like, yeah. that, that's part Actually, of why we're here. It's funny you mention nah. that because I had a few of those on my own. Like, I didn't check voicemail. Like, it, voicemail is not my preferred way to be contacted. Uh, they're like, but the red light's on your phone. I'm like, yes, that is what my phone looks like. That red light is always on. <laughs> and uh, I don't check those. And uh, anyone who works with me needs to know that that's not the best way. Like, it... it, it 
towards the end of Cisco, I was big time enough that I could just be like, yeah, I don't answer voicemails. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't answer, or I do answer voicemails sometimes, but most of the time they're so late when I finally check them that it's like, hey, we're confirming your fucking dentist appointment for September 8th. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I missed that. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I got to, I went years and I didn't know my voicemail password anymore. Like it became sort of not even an option to check them at some point. Because uh, the, the, you had to like enter a code, and they made everyone change their codes for security, and that's when I didn't know my code anymore. So, that's, so plausible deniability. Uh, I guess. Go. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It did get to a point at the, like my last year there, where I was really a YouTuber who still had a job at Cisco, and uh, that I don't know. It just it was just like you know like you guys are taking a lot of my time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, like, I know you're doing layoffs. Pick me, pick me. They didn't pick me. So. Would you ever consider going back? I do sometimes. Uh, I don't know if it'd be Cisco in particular. Cisco's not a bad place to work. Or but every so, Yeah, every so often I'm like, you know, I wonder if I'd like a, like a larger daily mission or something, you know, like a, a company to be a part of. I don't know. Sometimes I think like I might enjoy that. Uh, It'd yeah. probably be fun for you to do it at a much smaller company so that you could like see the tangible results of your efforts. So it doesn't feel like it's just kind of pumping effort into a machine and then, you know, who knows if what you did actually led to the to the growth. Yeah, I've thought that too. I, a smaller company, not only could I, I think I could get a higher position in a smaller company, that's typically uh, easier to get, I think. But uh, But like you said, you know, I'd be a bigger part of the machine as opposed to just a tiny little cog. And uh, yeah. yeah, so sometimes I think it might be neat to have a day job. Other times, you know, the weather's right and I'm absolutely happy I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> yeah. How long has so, it been since you've had a day job, Woody? Uh, I don't know. I would all park like 2011 or 12. Okay. That's, that's quite a bit of time at this point. Like five plus years. Yeah, we're it's almost 2018. So. Yeah, man, hey, Kyle, you cannot get your thoughts off of this prostitution idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just like, linked. Right. Another Why one. is there a girl leaning over? I don't know. I don't uh, like oh, I know. I was gonna do this AMA question. Um, hmm. This guy's asking about your motorcycle. He says, "Woody, where'd the motorcycle go? If you still have it, you're gonna make any moto vlogs." And Kyle, this this is the reason I wanted to do this. Would you ever get a motorcycle? I. I'll go first if you want me to, or you can. I'll just go real quick. Um, yeah, it's getting to be Woody motorcycle season again. I'm one of those guys that wears all that protective gear, and the summer was just freaking sweltering hot. Every day I've been, like, it's rained the past couple of days. But yeah, I, uh, I do intend to break that thing out shortly. This is my time. Well, you definitely should wear the protective gear. I'm, I'm glad that you do. No, I, I, I can't see myself ever getting a motorcycle. First of all, I really admire them as a piece of machinery i think they're one of the coolest looking pieces of machinery there are um i don't know much about motorcycles but like i've seen literally hours of youtube videos of guys on uh various kinds and i find them really sexy i i really like them uh they go so goddamn fast but the thing is the videos i watch are motorcycle crashes so i've seen so many people eat shit on crotch rockets and go barreling down highways at 200 kph or hitting guardrails at 60 70 miles per hour and go flying or hitting you know sometimes it's not even their fault you know yeah. uh, it, sometimes a car just turns in front of them and they hit a fender and they go flying uh sometimes they they a car uh pulls in front of them and they hit it in the boot in the trunk and they end up on the roof of the car all cut up and uh there's so I, the really fun videos are when guys uh, like get, they get cut off, the, the biker does, and he punches the mirror off their car. There's whole montage yeah. of that. I like that. So, so I've ridden motorcycles for a long time, uh, since I was 17, actually. And um, uh, if you sort of adopt this everything's your fault philosophy, I think that gets you pretty far. You know, every intersection you go through, even if you have a green light, you should be looking for people making mistakes. That's a motorcyclist's responsibility. You know, it, it, yeah, they shouldn't be making a left on you, but understand that you're practically invisible. So you know, even with my bright green helmet and coat and all that stuff, it, the one that gets me is the rear ended at the stoplight. Like that's just, oh yeah, and it happens. It, like, and you're like, you can't really avoid it. Yeah. Now there are people who are like, always leave it in gear. Look at your rear views. Ready for the... Dude, 
I don't think I do that well. You know, I, I, I'm vulnerable <laughs> to getting rear-ended. And, and there's a lot to track, right? You know, if you're going to pull out in the intersection instead of getting rear-ended, then you're, you're making a choice here, right? Like, you know, what's in the intersection? There's, there's a lot to watch. Yeah. They're dangerous. There's no doubt about it. And compared to a paramotor, the accident stats are worse. And... Oh the yeah, that, there aren't cars up there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would, I would text him. I would text and fly and any day. Up. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's just, you're up there by yourself. And and the thing about a paramotor is usually the faults are the problems are your fault, right? Like you, there's some skill you should have been better at. There's a decision you should have made on the motorcycle. It can just really not be your fault. You could be stopped at a red light, but uh, but I do love them so. Chiz, find a, a brutal video of somebody getting rear-ended on a motorcycle. <laughs> It'll take half a second. <laughs> filthy, you, filthy, you, I know you cycle. Do you cycle around like public roadways, around vehicles and stuff, yeah. or you go to a park? You do. Yeah. Is it scary sometimes? Like if you have yeah, any I, I get. I I'll, yeah, I'm always surprised by the fact that I live through that. Honestly, like because I, I cycle on where there are prairie paths around here, which are some of them converted railways, and some of them are just like paths maintained by the. Uh, the towns, but they cross they cross major roads all the time, and there's been all sorts of fucking shitty near misses with that with people who don't see you or don't stop for you. I had one I, I remember like the the I'm crossing some shitty intersection on, on this route, and uh, there's this you know I get I get my walk signal, so I'm going crossing the thing, and it's like someone's jumping the end of their light, and like they they come close enough, and like, the guy comes, he's a huge piece in this pickup truck going super fast, and, like I slam on my brakes so I don't get hit by that. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I said that out loud, and he responded as he's going by. He's like. I can't remember, I can't remember exactly what it was right now, but it's like that happened or something like that. Like there's some like, <laughs> some like total like not apologetic, total like fuck you thing as he almost killed me with his vehicle. And I'm like, yeah. wow, wow, that's the mentality the I'm dealing with. Consequences are 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 so uh, are so much different for him than you. He yeah. gets like a a three hundred dollar dent in his truck. <laughs> yeah, right. Die. There's also die. a thing about cycling. Yeah, he has to go to prison though. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The, there are a lot of drivers who feel like you shouldn't be on the road. At least motorcycles, most people understand like motorcycles are a motor vehicle and you know, they belong on streets. A lot of them are, they are, I want you to ride on the sidewalk. Really? Really? Because I go like, no, I don't, but I would assume you often go 25 miles an hour. You're supposed to do it on the sidewalk? It, right, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't like sharing the road ways with cyclists. If I'm being completely honest, like like I've I've driven through like parts of East Atlanta where they have their own little lane, you know, and it it's like oh my god, like like if the cycle wasn't there, I already have to dodge oncoming traffic and cars that that are parked in the roadway. So there are times when that's a complication, and now there's this guy over there whose life I'm responsible for because if I hit him, he's fucking dead. Because he's just sitting there on a piece of aluminum and carbon fiber over there. It's, I, I when I when I see a cyclist, I'm, I'm focused on it because the last thing I'd ever want to do is hit that guy. Like I could just imagine how much it'd fuck my car up. So <laughs> it's. This uh, seems a bigger guy. Like <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. Fat I don't cyclist. know. What's, what's the weight of a, a fat cyclist? I'm not a hunter, guys. Some of you guys must be, right? What's what's a what's the weight of a deer? Like what does it consist? Like hitting a cyclist, like a adult male cyclist, compared to a deer, who's gonna do more damage to your car? Um, uh, well, the bicycle is metal. Yeah, the but... deer doesn't have any metal parts I'm aware of. That yeah, because you got a man. Uh, like a deer weighs about the same as a man. You know, like like a, a oh, small deer is okay. like a hundred, hundred twenty pounds, and a big deer, like white-tailed deer in the south, you know, it's it, it's going to be like a hundred and forty to a hundred and seventy okay. pounds for a real big one. So it's like um, hitting a short man. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, something like that. But they got you know they Wait, got the what? antlers and they got different bone structure and they're a little lower to the ground. Their their body mass is a little lower. I've you, you hit a deer, you know it. Yeah, I've never hit a I, person. I need, I need that, like, I need some sort of, like, PSA yeah. style, like, advertisement around here. Like, I'm, I'm six foot two and 180 pounds. I'm much bigger than a deer. I'm going to fuck your car up if you hit me. I need that, like, broadcast some self interest, too. like, going on for <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, wear a shirt that says, like, think of your hood. That's you, right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be popping dings out, you know? And I don't want to be uh, ruining my family's weekend with an unplanned funeral. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> But it does remind me, like, I mean, this has always been something amazing for me as car. Like, the fact that all of our motor vehicles are controlled by another human being with all the fallacies, like, problems and, you know, fuck-ups and blast attention that human beings have. I'm always surprised that there aren't more deaths from automobiles. And I'm surprised how safe it mostly is out there. Because I'm yeah. always out there like, man, I mean, there's, like, a guy over there. He's driving a little erratically. He's probably had a couple beers. He's on his fucking cell phone. He's arguing with his wife in the car. He's swerving left and right. And yet he's not killed anyone yet tonight, which seems like a pretty good thing. And it's always – I'm always a little impressed by that. And the cars have gotten so much better. 
Like I, when I was young, when I was first learning to drive, there was almost a debate over like, oh yeah, these cars, they're not safe like they used to be. You take an old, you know, 67 Pontiac, whatever. Those things were built like bricks, you know, houses. Yeah. And uh, nowadays they all crumple up because they were just sort of figuring out that like crumple zones made cars safer. And all you yeah. needed mm -hmm. was a yeah. like space to live in that little passenger compartment. Yeah. And uh, now, like every so often, you see like a 67 Bel Air, I don't know my cars, against a modern Malibu. And <laughs> you know, dude, that that old car is a death trap. Yeah. And I uh, I've been getting into car YouTube channels like this, Doug DeMario or something in particular, but a bunch of them. And uh, every so often, I like, yeah, you know, like some of these fun cars are on the edge of like impulse purchase a bit. Like you know, like I could drop fourteen grand on something cool like that. You know, that thing's twenty two. I could have that. If, this is no reason I couldn't just do that. And uh, then it's like, but it's deadly I'm, I'm really taking a go-kart out on public streets if i yeah. get this it you're putting a yeah. lot of faith in the hands of other computers yeah. but yeah. I, I think where that that misconception would comes in or maybe it's a correct con uh, conception to some extent is like really minor fender benders and like yeah. a 55 bel air that thing's got this big chrome bumper on the front that it, you could tap another car at eight miles an hour Mm -hmm. And zero damage would be incurred yeah, to you anyway. It's it's just a big fucking plow bar on the front. This is gonna go bang, but but his like 2017 Malibu is gonna be all crumpled up in the back, and the plastic's gonna be torn in. But of course, you know, at a crash at 35 miles per hour, you're gonna be real fucked up in that Chevy, yeah. in that 55 Chevy. You know, whereas that Malibu is gonna crumple up, decelerate. You're inside this really strong uh, roll cage type thing that's that's just keeping you safe with side airbags and rear airbags and front airbags and you know everything's safe and better for you. Yeah, modern cars are much safer. I had I, I had an argument with Jeremy for 15 minutes one time because he says that sure. uh, yeah, <laughs> no one hates these damn mass shootings more than gun owners. Like it, yeah, it, it's. <sighs> Like they're the, they're the well, you know. Aside from the victims themselves, the gun owners are the big losers in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you put that little hedge in there. You know, aside, <laughs> aside from those who were personally shot, <laughs> it's really me. It's about me that's losing in this thing. <laughs> You're ruining it for all of us and the victims too. They're very upset as well. See, but yeah, that's the thing. Is like, how many members of the NRA have ever been involved in a mass shooting? Ever. I don't know. Zero. Is it zero? It's zero. Is it zero? Like, okay. That, that's what was interesting about this most recent shooting is like a guy who shouldn't have been allowed to get a gun legally got a gun because the regulations in place failed. And then the person who stopped him was an NRA instructor who had his own weapon and was, they chased him down. Like I was reading about the NRA recently and I, there was a stat that surprised me. I thought NRA was a powerful lobbying organization. That was, that was my impression. And that if you go against the NRA, then they cut your funding off. So you, know, you need that to run campaign ads and to keep your job. It turns out the NRA actually doesn't give much money. Like, like pharmaceuticals give something like, I forget, oh, I'm gonna mess it up. It was either 20 times more or 200 times more, but some like order of magnitude more than the NRA. And in terms of like, you know, who gives the most money, the NRA was like 19th on the list. Like there were all kinds of industries, telecom, yeah. energy, pharmaceuticals that, that gave more. What makes NRA such a powerful organization is that when they tell people this is the guy to vote for, not that guy, they do. And, and you know, like it, generally they don't tell people to vote for the people I want, but I do like the way they go about their business you know if your big thing is bicycles or something and everyone who cares about bicycles votes on that issue then that's a good way to do it i like that way more than the way the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical oh, yeah. people are doing it who just kind of fuck over their like customers the, uh, the nra is powerful because of their membership like okay. and the ability to reach millions of people who are very much invested in their second amendment rights it's not because of the lobbying i, I saw like the same probably spreadsheet or, or infographic you did where even i was i was kind of blown away too where i'm like what no this can't be right like their highest donation was 100 grand or 90 grand to some dude like that there's no way cuz you 
But once again, we always have talked about how we imagine these sums to be so yeah, gigantic. No. And then you'll be like, oh, how much did they pay this, you know, North Carolina senator to vote against net neutrality? Oh, oh $4,800, a nice fucking sandals vacation. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. all inclusive. Like, that's, Unre that's unreal. Unreal. Yeah, it, it blows me away. But yeah, so it, and, and like, I, I like the bicycle example a lot. You know, if, if suddenly like bike lanes were this big issue and people were single issue voters over bike lanes, and even though they were only donating, you know, some minimal amount to the politicians, everyone votes with bike lanes on the front of their mind. Mm -hmm. That's how lobbying should work. That I like that. It shouldn't be yeah, about it be money. Based on the passion of the membership. Makes yeah. Sense. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, truly we're the big losers in these mass shootings that have been going on recently. Oh, wait, I wonder what Trump would have tweeted if these mass shootings happened on Hillary's reign or Obama's or whatever. Like it, it, he would yeah, not have, gone. have been here. Well, I mean, mass shootings did happen in Obama's reign. What did he tweet? We could always scroll back through the through the times, yeah, and see uh, what what were the mass shootings under. Maybe that put together that I feel like this is a uh, great book idea. Like Orlando. just all of Trump's tweets. There's a subreddit the for it. The Orlando one happened during the election, and he tweeted that something along like, "Sorry about you guys, but hey, I was proven right, wasn't I? Wasn't I? I was right." <laughs> <laughs> I hate to gloat. Frankly, but <laughs> yeah, it's not look at me. me now. You know, like, look, look, look. Um, Sandy yeah. Hook, yeah. Oh, that's right. Sandy Hook happened during his thing. I wonder if. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I bet Trump tweeted about that. There's an Amazon link in here. I know there's going to be some models at the bottom. Wow, models in air quotes. You know, these are just random girls who who want to show off a little bit. I've, I. It takes a good bit of. That guy, uh, that Ice Beside guy, I, I wish I knew more about him and what his Why deal was. Why do people hate him and he's a Twitch streamer? He's a heel, yeah. though. Kyle's he's a heel, I guess. I saw him on Chatterbait the other day because it made it the front page of Reddit. Um, and he was, he was using a, a, a Hitachi a a wand on a, okay. on a porn star who was very attractive. And, uh, and I was like, this, this, guy, this guy knows what he's doing. Like, like, I think he had like 40,000 people watching him like masturbate this girl on there. And he's like, all right. Now I'm heading over to YouTube slash gaming slash Ice Poseidon or wherever he's heading. And then, you know, you know, he brings a significant chunk from his masturbatory session to some sort of gaming stream or something like that. Like, Good for him. Yeah, I, I don't get why he's so hated. Not, I, maybe I just don't know something about it. Maybe I'm just missing it. But it seems to me that, like, every clip I see of him entertains the fuck out of me because he, he's always getting into some rambunctious shit. Like, I saw him at a restaurant, and I guess people are like not swatting the restaurant, but they're phoning the restaurant and like asking for him or something because he's streaming from it. And the guy comes out and he's like, the owner, he's like, get the fuck out of here. We don't want you here. He's like, I'm in the, I'm hooked up with a mob. You don't want to be fucking with us. You don't want to be fucking with me. And he's like, oh, okay, sir. I, I don't want any problems with the mob. Okay. And he like packs his shit and leave. And it's always something like crazy like that. I, I, I uh. He seems to... I, I don't even know him. I've hardly even seen his streams, but he must not hate this deal. It's not like he's buckling under all of it. And uh, He put that video out the other day, and he was like, someone is ruining my life. A terrorist is ruining my life. He's doing this to me. He's doing that to me. This happens. That happens. Like, you know, the full gambit of things you can do to someone on the internet. I, I'm sure like, they're probably canceling his water and... And like, like, I had a lot of those issues, right? I, I, I'm sure I didn't rival Ice Poseidon in this, but people were fucking with me a lot. Every time I streamed, I was like maybe the very top DDoS target on Twitch. People liked fucking with me more than any other. They would st stream, snipe me, always try to kill me to a point where I couldn't just play pubs. I had to play against people who were trying to kill me, and that was just part of the deal. Um, I got ddos not ddos I got... Um, like fuck with so much from pizza deliveries and taxis and Chinese food and you name it that, you know, like business owners were coming to my house, finding out what the fuck the deal is. And I'm like, did you just don't do it? Like, don't take it. If it's for my address, it's fake. I will pay in advance. You know, don't do that. The police told me to move out of town, right? That was like a big, like, I really didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, told the you to move out. That was their solution there to was you getting fucking trolled was swatted. I got move. swatted so much. The police wanted me to leave town. And, uh, and I, I was like, like, I, I kind of pushed back against it. I was like, dude, the fuck? Like, you're a cop. You can't just, like, tell me to get out of town. And his boss came. Like, the lieutenant came. And he's like, look, I apologize for his behavior. You know, that, that it's not okay for us to start telling people that, that they shouldn't live in this town. And, uh, you know, people will try to turn power off or water off and shit like that. Um, even now, like, I get the fake credit cards or something like that probably two or three times a month. Um, 
you know, opened in my name and there's all, I imagine my credit record's kind of wrecked, which isn't a problem because I don't need any debt, but, uh, I would have to get it all cleaned up if I ever wanted to take a loan for something because it's constant just like, Oh no, like I don't know who that bank is. I've never heard of them. I don't spend any time in Washington, the state, like, like that's, that's, that's where I am. So ice on the other hand, like my impression of it from a distance was always like, ah, oh, he, he kind of revels in that life. You know, I always accepted it as part of the job almost like not that I liked it. Uh, whenever I made a video, one thing I didn't like is people would um, like watch it with a reason to dislike it. You know, they click the dislike button, they leave a comment like, oh, this is the problem I had with this one. And it's like, man, I worked so hard on that. <laughs> like that, that represented my best effort. And you're like, ah, oh, you know, you threw a stun grenade improperly at four in 12 seconds and like ah oh, fuck like it, it just you guys just freaking watch this whole thing second by second waiting for something that's not perfect and like that's your comment and uh and i didn't like it it took a toll on me and i was under the impression that it didn't take a toll on ice you know like chael sonnen is a ufc fighter now a bellator fighter he seems to say it doesn't take a toll on him he's happy to be the bad guy he's happy to you know have people hate him but then again nobody does so uh, I Andy Kaufman, maybe. Andy Kaufman, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah. There's some people who, but he was loved He's too, like, right? Yeah. But was he, or did people love Andy Kaufman, right? No. Andy Kaufman. Andy he was Kaufman loved was insane. And yeah, you know, like, like, like he, he, he's a really unique kind of guy. Like, yeah. I, you have to watch like a whole documentary on that guy to really even start to understand the levels of crazy that he went through with Jerry the King Lawler and and like all, and, and then his performance bits and like like some of the shit he would do was just so bizarre. But it's a different uh, thing to be the biggest dick you possibly know how to be and have half the people love you, half the people hate you, than to be the best person you know how to be and have half the people love you and half the people hate you. And uh you know, I, I wonder where ice falls on that spectrum. What does he do mostly? Like video game streams or masturbating porn stars? Or like, what is it? Why do people hate him? What did he do? I think we're asking Shiz right now because I, I, I'm in the same oh. boat as you. All in I've seen, streaming. It, I've seen a lot of him streaming. I've, all the clips I see of him are him like streaming in public and then the cops show up and arrest him. You know, stuff like that will happen a lot. She just says people hate him because he's a dick. I wonder what, like, I know he's done some interesting things. Didn't he fly to China, you know, just to get a new scene? And, like, that to me represents a certain work ethic. You know, he's not going out and walking in his backyard and mowing or something. He's, he's flying to China looking for to vary up his content, and that's cool, right? You know, when you live in L.A., there's a lot to do, Chiz says. That's a thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find it interesting. I, I, I've looked for him. You know, like I've gone on these, I just look at the wrong time, I guess. I don't know his schedule. Well, <laughs> in any case, that's a funny fucking clip of his girlfriend getting picked up. It seems like she was mistaken for a prostitute. I'm pretty sure that's what Sebastian was looking for there. Uh, that, that's pretty fucking hilarious. And I love the curb, uh, your enthusiasm music coming in. That's sure. good shit. Did you, <laughs> what does did you ever watch, stand for again? Something over there? Uh, that hoe over there. Oh, did, you ever, uh, did you ever check out 10 Star at all? I will, I promise. I, uh... yeah, yeah, take your time, you know, whatever, but, but I promise.